Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is the drug of the day series where today we will be discussing briefly about the drug propyl thiouracil. So let's get started. So propyl thiouracil belongs to the class of antithyroid drugs where it acts as an inhibitor of hormone synthesis. Okay, so it inhibits hormone synthesis. We'll see this in the classification part, and its main use is uh, in the treatment of hyperthyroidism. So as the name suggests, hyper means excessive, and thyroidism is basically the thyroid hormone. So hyperthyroidism is basically hyperactive or hyper secretion of thyroid uh, hormones from the thyroid gland. Now you need to remember two terms here: Graves' disease and toxic nodular goiter, which are both type of hyperthyroidism. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease, and toxic nodular goiter is also caused because of uh, excessive secretion of uh, the thyroid hormone. But it is independent of TSH. So both these are type of hyperthyroidism. Now this is the classification of antithyroid drugs, which I took from KDT. Now, uh, thyroid hormones are of two types: T4 and uh, T3. T4 is known as thyroxine, which is the main hormone, and T3 is known as triiodothyronine or liothyronine. Now, this is the classification here of the thyroid inhibitors. We have the ones, those drugs that inhibit the hormone synthesis, those that inhibit iodine trapping, and the ones that inhibit hormone release, and the ones that destroy the thyroid tissue. So today we'll be looking at propyl thiouracil, which is uh, which is the antithyroid drug that inhibits hormone synthesis. The two other drugs from this class are methimazole and carbimazole. So we have propyl thiouracil, methimazole, and carbimazole, which inhibits the hormone synthesis. Now this is the structure of propyl thiouracil, and this is the IUPAC name. So as you can see here, one heterocyclic ring is present in its structure, which is the pyrimidine ring. So this ring is pyrimidine ring, a six-carbon cyclic ring with two NH groups, two nitrogen atoms, is a pyrimidine ring, and the IUPAC name is six propyl. This is the sixth position. This is the first position, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and this is the sixth position. So we have a propyl chain on the sixth position. That's why six propyl, two sulfanyl diene, which is the sulfur group here, attached via double bond. Pyrimidine heterocyclic ring and four O that is a keto group present on the fourth position. So this is the IUPAC name. Now let's look at the mechanism of action by which these antithyroid drugs act, specifically propyl thiouracil. So propyl thiouracil binds to an enzyme known as thyroid peroxidase. This is very very important. So it binds to thyroid peroxidase enzyme, and this is the enzyme that catalyzes the three important reactions. Which occurs during the process of thyroid hormone synthesis, and these three reactions are oxidation, organification, and coupling reaction. Okay, so thyroid peroxidase enzyme is the enzyme that catalyzes the three main reactions that occur during thyroid hormone synthesis, and so it binds to this uh, thyroid peroxidase enzyme, and it prevents the oxidation of the iodide residues. This is very important. Then what happens is. because of uh, because it prevents the oxidation of the iodide residues then there will be inhibition of the iodination of tyrosine residues and it also inhibits the coupling of iodo tyrosine residues to form t3 and t4 so it inhibits the coupling also and it inhibits iodination also by binding to this thyroid peroxidase enzyme okay then what happens is the thyroid colloid which is basically the pool of thyroid hormone it is depleted over time and then finally the blood levels of t3 and t4 are progressively lower so this is the entire mechanism of action also the most important thing here that you need to remember is that propyl thiouracil inhibits the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 and it does it by acting uh, on the d1 type of receptors which are dopaminergic receptors so propyl thiouracil inhibits the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 and the other uh, two drugs from this class which is carbimazole and methimazole they do not have this uh, this action this inhibition of peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 they don't have this action so only propyl thiouracil is the one that inhibits the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 methimazole and carbimazole do not have this action and they may even antagonize this action of propyl thiouracil that's why their combination needs to be avoided now let's look at the pharmacokinetics 
so it is quickly absorbed orally it is widely distributed it is metabolized in the liver and then excreted via urine it gets concentrated in the thyroid gland easily the plasma t half is around 1 to 2 hours and the most important point here is carbamazole which is the drug from this class only it largely it acts largely by getting converted to methimazole so carbamazole is a pro drug which gets converted into methimazole in the body and thus it is longer acting than propyl thiouracil so this is very important from the three drugs that are present in this class only carbamazole is the one that is a pro drug so carbamazole is a pro drug that gets converted into methimazole inside our body and thus it is longer acting if it is compared with propyl thiouracil next is the adias that are caused by propyl thiouracil so first is hypothyroidism and goiter so hypothyroidism and goiter can occur because of over treatment but it is reversible so if we'll stop the drug then it is reversible and this is mainly uh, indicated by enlargement of the thyroid gland other important side effects are gi intolerance skin rashes and joint pain and then uh, we also have loss of uh, loss or graying of the hair we have loss of taste fever and even liver damage but these are infrequent side effect but a very rare side effect rare but serious side effect that occurs in around 1 to 1 in 1000 cases is a granulocytosis so this is very rare but it is a serious adverse effect and even this is uh, reversible so a granulocytosis is important here and this hypothyroidism and goiter which occurs because of over treatment next is uses so uh the anti thyroid drugs uh they uh, first you need to remember that propyl thiouracil is the drug of choice okay it is the drug of choice for treatment of hyperthyroidism during the first trimester of pregnancy and in lactation now why it is the drug of choice during pregnancy we'll see this in the next slide but this is very important use of propyl thiouracil that it is the drug of choice during pregnancy for treatment of hyperthyroidism in the first trimester of pregnancy so in pregnant women propyl thiouracil is given and in rest other patients we give sorry we give methimazole then it can be used to control thyrotoxicosis in both uh, graves disease and toxic nodular goiter and it can be used as a definitive therapy now this is important so uh, the patients of graves disease they are given propyl thiouracil and remission uh, can occur in around half of the patients in around 1 to 2 years so it is given as a definitive therapy in uh, the patients of graves disease then it can also be given pre operatively okay so patients who have undergone operation for hyperthyroidism or goiter then in them also pre operatively uh, this uh, uh, propyl thiouracil can be given and lastly it can be given along with iodine 131 so um, Uh, the patients who are taking iodine 131 in them the initial control is given by the anti thyroid drugs for up to 1 to 2 weeks and then a gap is there and then the radio iodine dosing is done and then after that we again res uh, resume with anti thyroid drugs so along with iodine 131 also propyl thiouracil can be given now this is the this is the difference between propyl thiouracil and carbamazole which is the other drug from this class uh this uh, comparative table uh, is from kdt only and it is very important so if we compare propyl thiouracil with carbamazole we'll see that uh, propyl thiouracil is less potent if we compare the potency dose to dose it is less potent but carbamazole is around 5 times more potent so this is important then propyl thiouracil is highly plasma protein bound and carbamazole is less plasma protein bound and propyl thiouracil is less transferred across placenta and in milk this third point is very important propyl thiouracil is less transferred across the placenta and in the milk but carbamazole uh, if we see carbamazole then larger amounts can cross the fetus can cross the placenta and then go inside the fetus and also can cross uh, the no, it also it it also gets concentrated in the milk that's why propyl thiouracil is preferred in pregnant women carbamazole is not given because it can harm the fetus because large amounts can cross the placenta and also it can it can get concentrated in the milk then in propyl thiouracil the plasma t half is around 1 to 2 hours and a single dose will act for around 4 to 8 hours and carbamazole its uh, t half is uh, 6 to 10 hours plasma t half and a single dose will act for about 12 to 12 to 24 hours and also 
प्रोपाइल थायोरासिल नो एक्टिव मेटाबोलाइट इज प्रोड्यूस बट हियर एन एक्टिव मेटाबोलाइट इज प्रोड्यूस दैट बिकॉज फार्बिमाजोल इज अ प्रोडक्ट सो द एक्टिव मेटाबोलाइट इज मेथिमाजोल Now, since propyl thioracil has a less plasma T half, that's why multiple dosing are required. But in car, but with carbamazole, only a single daily dose is required. Also, propyl thioracil. Uh, another important point here is propyl thioracil inhibits the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. But this is not seen with the case of carbamazole. It does not inhibit the conversion of T4 to T3. So the two most important point here that you need to remember is this. The third point that propyl thioracil is less transferred across placenta. That's why it is pre uh, preferred in pregnant women, and uh, it also inhibits the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. And also it is less potent and uh, no active metabolite is produced in carbamazole. An active metabolite is produced that is methimazole. Now let's look at few uh, questions. Oh, just a second. Hmm. So the first question is the drug of choice for the treatment of thyrotoxicosis during pregnancy. So just now we discussed this. The options are carbamazole or iodine therapy, propyl thioracil or methimazole. So all of these are anti-thyroid drugs. But the main anti-thyroid drug that is used during pregnancy is propyl thioracil. Next question is conversion of T4 to T3 inhibition is associated with which drug? so propyl thioracil ampicillin lithium or carbamazole so this also is important so inhibition of the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 is done by only one drug which is propyl thioracil and the last question is propyl thioracil inhibits which of the following enzyme this is very important the options are glucose peroxidase thyroid peroxidase glutathione peroxidase or horse radish peroxidase so among all these the only uh, peroxidase enzyme that is inhibited by propyl thioracil is thyroid peroxidase enzyme this is important so propyl thioracil inhibits thyroid peroxidase enzyme so thank you i hope you enjoyed today's video and found it informative and if you did please like it and share it with all of your friends who are preparing for gpat and nipo and also subscribe to our channel where we daily post such informative videos we also have a free whatsapp group where we daily put mcqs related to gpat and nipo so if you wish to join the group please do leave a message on these two numbers that are given here and we'll do the needful thank you